Welcome to the practical color grading tutorial series. In this series, we use Color Finale to work on problems faced by both professionals and beginners. Today, we will talk about HR cell curves. This is a unique tool that allows us to target specific colors, saturation and brightness regions in images. It stands that HSL itself is short for Hue, Saturation and Luma. Let's explore in detail how this tool works in theory and in practice. Questions about HSL curves often show up in the comments. If you have questions about this or any other topic, leave a comment below and we will aim to help you. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to not miss our future episodes. Let's get started. In front of us is a gradient with the primary colors, blue, red, green, as well as their secondary colors, cyan, magenta, yellow and cyan again. The gradient is also split up by brightness from dark to light. To the left we have two scopes, a vector scope and a luma waveform. On the vector scope we can clearly see the primary colors, red, green and blue, and the secondary colors, yellow, cyan and magenta. On the luma waveform we see a sort of stair-step representation of the image brightness, from zero, representing the shadows, to the brightest tones at 100. As you can see, the brightness of each color is different. Now let's apply Color Finale, open the Layers panel and add Hue, Saturation and Luma curves. In front of us appears a tool that we immediately notice displays several tabs, Hue vs Hue, Hue vs Saturation, Hue vs Luma, Saturation vs Luma and Saturation vs Saturation. Let's start with the first and most popular tool, Hue vs Hue. It allows us to target and change particular colors. In order to change a color, for example green, we first need to select it on the curve. But before we begin, notice the three dot menu on the right. Here we have an option that allows us to turn extended mode on or off. Make sure that extended mode is enabled because that's the way in which HSL curves work in most other programs. Now let's turn our attention to the left side of the menu, where we have three ways of modifying the control points that we place on the curve. The first is set selected points hard, second is set selected points smooth and the third one is lock curves to points. Let's select lock curves to points since this is the most accurate and also appropriate option to use in most cases. We'll talk about these other control point modifiers in a little while. Now let's select the green. There are several ways of doing this. The first is doing it by hand. We can pick the range where the green begins ourselves by command clicking to add a point and then command clicking to add a second point on the other side. With this we have selected the green color range. In order to adjust the color, we need to place another point in the middle. By moving it around, we change the green into different colors. If we raise the point, then the green changes to cyan. To understand what the change will be, you can look at the curve line. Cyan is to the right of green. So when we raise the point of a particular color, then this color begins to change into the color that's to the right. You can also orient yourself with the help of the vector scope. When we raise the point, the vector goes anti-clockwise towards cyan. If we raise the point higher still, then the color will keep changing towards the blue. Since blue is further to the right of cyan, and is the next color on the vector scope. And in this way until magenta, which is on the opposite side to green. When we lower the point, then everything happens in the same way, but in reverse. We would be changing the green into the colors to the left of the point on the curve. Let's lower the point to see how the green becomes yellow. On the vector scope, this can also be clearly seen. Going further, between yellow and red, we get orange, and then red, until we hit magenta. 
and in this way we can change any other colors too. For example, we can make it so that all the colors become cyan. Let's place an additional control point and start raising the yellow tones until they become cyan. We are left with a green band. This happened because we have fixed a point strictly at the end of the green color range. We can place an additional point that includes cyan and raise the point that's now midway until the colors match. In this way, we can interact with any color. Now let's delete these points and try a different way of selecting green. You can get rid of a point in several ways. The first way is by right-clicking and selecting Delete Selected. The second way is even easier. Hold down Option and click on the point you want to delete. If we want to get rid of all the points, then we can press the Reset button that's to the bottom left of the curve or by right-clicking on the curve. On the bottom right, pressing Reset All resets not just the current curve, but curves under every tab. Now let's try selecting the green by using a different method. On the left, we can see multicolored circles. If we pick the green one, then this color range is automatically selected on the curve. Three points immediately appear and we can easily modify the color. In this way, we can select other colors too. Red, yellow, cyan, blue or magenta. If we need to pick all the colors at once, we can select the very last circle at the bottom. This places points on all the colors and we can adjust them however we want. And now the third method of selecting colors on the curve using the color picker tool. Choosing this tool, we select the green. Notice the tooltip with the color information. This includes a square preview of the pixels we are hovering over with the cursor so that we can get a clearer idea of what colors we are pointing to. Right now it's all greens. When we hover over red, the preview displays the different red tones and likewise with the blue. When we hover the cursor over secondary colors such as magenta, we can see that there is red and blue in it. The closer we are to red, then the greater its value while the amount of blue decreases. If we raise the cursor, blue's value goes up in the mix until it's all blue. Moving the cursor to the right corresponds to the increase in the brightness and saturation of the blue color. Conversely, inspecting to the left reveals a drop in brightness and saturation. At last, let's click on the green and now we can modify its color in the same way as previously shown. Now let's try HSL curves in practice. In front of us is a video with predominantly red and green colors. Let's apply color finale and then go into layers, choose HSL curves, select lock curves to points option and isolate the red. Three points appear on the curve that limit the range to our chosen color that we can now modify. If we raise the middle point, then the tomatoes start to look more yellow, and if we lower it, then they start to look more rose. And like this, we can adjust the look of a product and influence how the audience perceives it in the video. In this case, by modifying the color, we are changing the sort of tomatoes we are showing, from red to yellow and pink by using one tool. Let's go over to a slightly more complicated example with a busier composition. On the left of this shot, there is a blue light. Let's try changing its hue. Applying color finale, going to layers, selecting HSL curves and the lock curves to points option, then adding the points to select cyan. Now by modifying this selection, we are effectively changing the color of the side light. As you can see, there's a prop in the background that this light falls on. These small areas also change in color as their color values fall into our selected range. With this, we have changed the color of the light quite realistically. We can similarly change the green and the blue tones. But if we are going to modify the reds, yellows and magenta colors, here it's better to tread carefully. These colors are normally found in skin tones too. Let's try changing the color of the ketchup bottle. Choosing a color picker, we select red and modify it. You can see that the color of the person's lips also starts to change and in addition, their skin color may be affected too. In order to avoid this, 
we can mask off the area that we want to modify. For this, we go into masking mode. Let's select it now and apply a mask to the image. Choosing a shape for the mask, we select the area that we don't want to affect with our adjustments. If the model in the shot doesn't go outside of the mask, and the shot itself is static, then this will be enough. Right now the HSL curves are applied to the area inside the mask. To invert the effect, we can toggle the invert setting. Now the HSL curves adjustments do not affect the objects inside the mask. We will talk in more detail about masks and masking in other episodes. For now, let's explore the other tabs in the HSL curves tool. Returning to the gradient, let's select the hue versus saturation tab. In this mode, the curve looks the same, only now we are not dealing with changing colors, but rather the relationship between colors and how saturated they are. Let's select the green again and lower the point. We can see that the saturation of this color on the gradient has gone down. On the vector scope, you can clearly see how the vector has become smaller in magnitude due to the decreased saturation in the color. If we raise the point on the curve, then the saturation will increase. And this is the same for all the other colors. Let's see this in practice. In our example with the tomatoes, we can also change the saturation of the main color, making it more or less saturated without affecting other colors. Let's go over to the next tab, Hue versus Luma. We see the same colored curve again, only this time we are influencing not the contrast, but the brightness of a selected color. We pick green. Now, when we lower the point, the color becomes darker, and when we raise the point, it gets brighter. This is very clearly seen on the Luma waveform. Green on its own is reasonably bright. When we lower the point on the curve, it becomes darker. Let's use this mode in a practical way. We can select a particular color, for example cyan, and increase the brightness of the light in the background, or instead we can make it darker. But it's important to be careful when using this HSL curves mode. If we use the color picker and start analyzing some objects in the scene, we can notice that the colors of things in real life are not absolutely even and that other colors are often also present in the mix. If we select a specific color and strongly decrease or increase its brightness, then the neighboring colors could show artifacts. To prevent this from happening, you should avoid using the maximum values of the curve. Another decision to make is which control point mode to work in. If we choose set selected points smooth, then when we raise or lower the point, the neighboring regions change smoothly along with it. In this way, we can avoid unnecessary contrast, since the colors next to the main selected one fall off more gradually. The first mode is similar to the second, with the difference being that it acts on a selected color more precisely and has less influence on the neighboring colors. Now let's return to the gradient and explore the remaining tabs. The next mode and tab is Saturation versus Luma. Here the curve looks like this. Now we can target specific brightness regions and adjust the amount of saturation in them, such as in the shadows, midtones, or highlights. Let's put a point and select the shadows. If we lower the point, then the saturation in the shadows decreases. This mode is especially useful in practice when you have color noise in your shadows. With it, you can reduce the intensity of the noise. In this way, the midtones and highlights can also be selected. The saturation increased or decreased, especially in the highlights. This can be done too, but is comparatively rarely used in practice. Now we are on the last tab and mode, saturation versus saturation. The curve is visually similar to the previous one, only now it affects the saturation in the selected saturation regions. If we want to get rid of unwanted levels of saturation, we can place a point and reduce the most saturated colors, and the other way around. If we want to equalize the saturation levels in the image, we can raise a point in the least saturated regions. In practice, 
we can quite smoothly change the saturations of all the colors, creating unique looks. Now you have all the required knowledge you need in order to start using HSL curves in your own projects. If you have any questions remaining, please leave a comment below and we will strive to help you out. In the video description, you will find a link to the gradient used in this video that you can download and use to practice with. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified about our new episodes. Until the next time!